a very slow afternoon for me. We've been getting dust of snow all morning, and it seemed like a nice time. Teddy's out enjoying the snow. It really is beautiful. You can see the different ridges in the mountain by how much fog there is between you and the distance. You can't exactly tell how far the trees are out, but you can look at And the pine trees are always so perfect. They all grow to a perfectly similar height. And they all maintain a perfect distance apart from one another. And there's the right amount of relief in their branches that they sway in the wind without too much stress. I've always loved the way the pine trees look when they're covered with snow. There's something about the sits right on the tips of the branches and the needles. When you're present of mind and you're paying close attention to the things around you, you're using your senses more than you're using your ideas and your words. I think that's exactly what is meant by mindfulness, is that your mind is applied to the act of being more than the willful idea, but there's rhythm to everything, and ideas are so important that we mold them out that we leave appropriate time aside. It always has to be rhythm. And if there's not rhythm, then you definitely are able to spiral out too quickly. You just think the same thoughts over and over again, and you think that by repeating exactly what you were thinking that you could arrive at some new, more reasonable understanding of them. But the ideas are precisely that. It's the act of ideating and distancing the things themselves from your ability to perceive them. So I think that's why it's important that people learn about what exactly ideas are and what they mean to us. Idea is the substance of mind, and if 
you pay attention to the idea of idea. It's a little bit similar to when you're using your eyes and ears to perceive the things around you because you are now mindful of the state of consciousness itself. In Taoist philosophy, there's the principle of Wu Wei, and that is effortless action. It is being without being. One must pay close attention to the words that they use because even the word thinking invokes thinking. And so that's why it's important to be mindful, to focus on the trees and the branches and the snow falling. And you can see that there's a very gentle wind snow's falling and you can see that the snow's falling at an angle and that means that the wind is carrying it into the west it's as if the snow has somewhere to be but nowhere precisely there's also a slight convection effect just outside the bounds of the deck. The snow is gently lifting up over and towards the house. And the sky is completely whitish gray. It's a bit foreboding. blocking the camera, but just behind it, you can see in the distance smoke rising from someone's house, and you know that everyone's staying warm. We're all very grateful to have gas and electricity and water whenever we need it. you know that all of your food is staying fresh. Many people even have multiple different ways to keep their home warm. And that means that even if one of them is not working Reliably, if they ran out of gas, then they might also have an electric heater or blankets or the warmth of their family and their pets. These things do keep us warm, and we notice when we brush up against the cold for some reason that. Even the rooms of our house that have more living, breathing things in them are so much warmer than all of the rest. When it's snowy, I do like to read a lot. part, if I do go and read fiction, it'll be shorter books. They have to pack more information into a shorter space of time. But 
the pages aren't really time, are they? Time shifts around in movies and writing. But in real life, time ticks at the exact same pace. And others, we too, are missing our leaves. And the rhythm of life also means that even life itself isn't permanent. Just as the leaves drop off, we too will eventually. That's how it becomes so easy to see how precious every last moment is. We know who we are, yet we know not who we may be. I think even more precisely, we have an idea of who we are, and an idea of who we may be, and I do believe that even when our lives feel like they're sort of on pause, that the most important thing we can hold on to is the idea of what shall come. We don't have to be confident about it either. We just have to keep facing forward. We have to keep being mindful. And we have to give ourselves a break sometimes. We don't need to be embarrassed or ashamed. Sometimes the sun emerges from just behind the clouds, and I love to see the tone of the room gently change. Things take on a slightly different tone and cast a different shadow. The aspen trees always bear Each one of them is perfectly unique, but they all carry a similar characteristic. And they all have such rough bark. You can see the contrast between the whitish exterior and the brown layer underneath. And when the trees are slightly damp from rain or from snow, the depth of the dark inner layer is enhanced. Like when the street is covered in rain, every rock and every speck on the street becomes more apparent even from a distance. The rain reflects it, magnifies it.
moved upstairs. This blanket is so fluffy. The way they make synthetic fur blankets is by extruding very fine fibers through the base layer that they are attached to. And the only way to do that is by blowing them through as if in a wind tunnel. And I think to myself about exactly how precise the temperature of the factory floor consistently the nylon or other polyester type material must be for them to extrude it like this. And it really does feel almost like a chinchilla. And you think to yourself that a material like that can exist in nature, and it's as though nature spent millions of years, billions of billions of years even, eternity even, so that chinchillas could have such soft fur. We spoke a lot to the topic of having the silence to hear. And I do think that it's an important thing to consider is that in order to hear, it does require an element of silence for any noise to exist. There must also be a baseline soft as a chinchilla's fur on certain parts of his body, like on his belly and around his ears, are very, very soft. I don't leave my house much these days, and the reality is that I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm agoraphobic, and I do actually like being watched sometimes, but I do find it exceedingly difficult to be in public. I've always been embarrassed. Even when I'm not in public, I am thinking about how I am perceived. I'm not afraid of disease any longer, though, because I walk by faith. And I recognize that all that I ever 
It's easy to have a troubled relationship with faith because the nature of faith itself is troubling. It is fleeting. And it is precisely what is fleeting that requires that we have faith in it. We become exhausted with who we are or what we've chosen. And that's where faith comes in. That's the exercise of faith itself. And to do right by others. emphasize that you can please some of the people some of the time but you can never please everyone and that is why we must walk by faith That's why it's important to think about your living, breathing moment as an exercise in faith, because it puts you in the right mindset to understand how precious every last moment is, everything that exists. goodness in all of them, and there always has been, and there always will be. It's freeing to remember this. There is goodness. so often a bird will dart into a neighboring tree very deliberately. Yes. 
just another day, really. Too many of the days are the same now. Although I suspect that too many of the days are the same always. I didn't really have any idea what I was going to talk about. say that, I suppose what I mean is that I didn't really think too much about what I meant to talk about, and I just let my mind carry me. And so with that, 